Once upon a time, Kumu was simple. Then the users asked for and got a thousand options, which made it very complicated. So I created this template called Kumu Template, you know, real unique name, uh, very creative, so that people could use it to create relationship models and not have to wade through all of the questions about what about this and this and this and this, because the options are pretty much endless. <clears throat> so once you open this template, which is just kumu.io stw kumu template, and go to this fork project option here and tell it to fork this project, it will create a version of this project that belongs to you. So you can do anything that you want to with it. And it will tell you what the what the name of it is. <clears throat> and when you open it, you have a version that belongs to you, which looks just like what you started with. And what I included here was a reinforcing loop and a balancing loop, a template for embedding videos in the the project that actually open in a light box. There's no video here, so it doesn't present anything, but the the code for the template is there and all you need to, to put in is is the ID from, from YouTube. Um, then there's also um, an extensive definition or set of guidelines about basic relationships that's in uh, and it's all connected. And this is a link to it, which will take you there um, in in the web and you can then go through the pieces and the, the temp template itself, the link is here. And here are the, the guidelines that I developed for the way you should actually go about creating a relationship model. Now, back to the template itself. I also included, if you don't have a Kumu account, you can sign up for one for free with this link. And there's also a link here to um, a Google Docs folder that contains a zip file with about 800 200 by 200 circle images created by Jim Cameron for me that, that look like this with this metaphor, this little guy doing stuff in them. Uh, people have found them interesting, useful, and with 800 of them, it covers about anything you might want to uh, depict in a relationship model. So that's what's here to begin with. In terms of using this, you can simply hold the shift key and when you're ready, you can select all of the stuff and hit the delete key and get rid of it all. And you then start from a, a blank screen. In terms of if you change something on the screen, notice that that a little um, reverse loop will show up down here, which is an undo loop. So you can undo changes that you've made to the model. And in terms of actually creating things in this structure, it's actually quite simple. The, the, when you delete everything else and you have a blank screen, the first thing you want to add is an element and you simply click the plus sign and say add element. And you can say um, full, if you add two spaces, it treats it as a hard carriage return so full swimming pool is something that I want. Now, note that the, it's once you create an element, and if you look at the guidelines, it'll be clearer. Elements can, can be a stock variable or constant. If you call it a stock, which is something that accumulates, it will actually change the color of it to yellow. So it's identified as something that accumulates. Now, the full swimming pool, uh, the current level of this, the, I currently have an empty swimming pool, so I can go ahead and add another element and call it empty. Just a, a swimming pool and put that down here, which is the current state of things. And that is actually a stock. And full swimming pool is, a, the swimming pool that I have is the stock this is the desired state of things and it's really just a constant. It's not, uh, it's not a stock. The difference between the two of these is a gap. Now, if I hold the, hold the alt key on a PC and mouse over this and drag off, I can create a new element just 
in that manner. I don't know why. It, oh, sorry. The problem is I already got a gap. Um, so I can select that, hit delete. Let me call it um, um, difference. That, that'll be good. Difference. All right. Now, when I when I look at this and I say, all right, the relationship between these, and now this video is going to get far longer than I wanted it to be. The difference between these, if if I increase, uh, before I do that, let me create the other piece here, this piece. All right. The difference is the difference between the full swimming pool and the empty swimming pool. And, and I really want that difference to go to zero. But if I increase the full swimming pool, then difference will get greater. So this is this is one of those um, adds to or in the same direction because if I increase this, this increases. But if I increase the value of the empty swimming pool, this actually gets smaller. So this is a subtract from, from opposite. And therefore, I end up with my first relationship. That difference actually governs the, the, the extent to which I make the, the hose valve open to cause the water to flow. So this, this relationship is in also in the same direction. And the hose, as the hose flow increases it, it actually adds to the swimming pool. So this is also in the same direction, which is another one of these. And, and the difference between the stock and, ver and variables is that notice that as the hose, the flow in the hose gets less and less, it still adds to this. Uh, as opposed to changing in the same direction. So that's why these, these relationships are overloaded in terms of, of what they mean. In other words, adds to same and subtracts from opposite. Depends upon whether the relationship is between uh, variables or, or stocks, things that accumulate. But now that I've created this, this loop, I can actually identify it as a loop. And the way that you identify a loop in Kumu is to say add loop. You then go ahead and tell it which elements, hold down the shift key, tell it which elements are actually part of the loop. And I'll say, that, and then I'll call it filling the pool. So I now have a loop. And it understands this whole selection to be a loop because if I hold down Alt key and click here and move it, I can move this whole loop together because it's defined to be the same. Now, Certain things, additional things are, if I select this, I can come over here and select the delay indicator to say that it takes time for the hose to fill the swimming pool. I can change the direction on arrows if I want to by simply selecting it and collecting this. I can also uh, select items, hit the delete key or hit the trash can to put them in the trash. And uh, um, one additional item is or a, a very relevant item is that whether it's an element or a connection or a loop, every one of them has a, a profile page. Notice on the left that it has a title, uh, a type, a place to put a description and other things. Um, and it's important to, to describe the elements and the connections and the loops because other people are not with you as you sort of mentally walk your way through figuring out the set of relationships. And it's appropriate to provide those descriptions to help other people understand them. And there are things about, about labeling them that are important and doing it in an order so other people know what order to read the loops. Uh, and so if you look at the examples in and it's all connected, there are multiple examples of relationship models with explanations of them that give you a sense of um, just how elaborate they can be. But this was, was initially just to give you a sense of the mechanics in, in 10 minutes or less of 
how to create a relationship model in Kumu without having to worry about all of the behind the scenes pieces that are part of it. So hope this is helpful. And to, if you have questions, please post them on the Facebook group or um, as comments inside of this model, because this is a, a model created in a, um, in a, an organizational account, you can click on any element in the model and tell it that you want to go ahead and create a comment about it. So that if I clicked here and then went over here to comment, that would actually create a discussion about that particular element, which is, which is one of the, the really nice features of the organizational account aspect. So, um, hope this is helpful and we'll continue the development of understanding as time goes on. Take care. Bye.